Good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm delighted to greet you on this brisk, cool um, Tuesday morning in the master's name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who alone is worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. God's name is worthy to be praised. So how's everybody today? Let me take this opportunity to thank those of you who joined us for worship on Sunday. We had a wonderful Palm Sunday service, as we declared, with Christians all over the world. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. And you were here. Thank you so much um, for being here. Also, um, we had a wonderful dinner, and then we had a wonderful Easter concert. Um, our theme, Jesus Christ is alive. And the music ministry did a wonderful, wonderful job. I just met with Mrs. Terry to express to her my deep appreciation for the music ministry in the afternoon and in the morning. All right. And so now, as you know, Palm Sunday starts Holy Week and we are fasting this week. And so I hope that you are joining us and that you're following um, the meditations. I hope that you're reading the gleaners as we seek to get closer to God. And all of the details are there. If you don't have it, you can go to our website, um, SalemBrooklyn.com, and everything is there that will guide you through this season. The Bible reminds us that some things only come through fasting and praying. And then I hope that you will join us on Thursday. On Thursday, we'll have a worship experience here in the sanctuary, and then we'll go to the upper room to um, have what we call the reenactment of the Lord's Supper, what we believe is the final supper that Jesus had with his disciples. It's a moving experience. We only have the words of Jesus that we believe that Jesus shared with his disciples just before he would go to Calvary to die for your sins and my sins. And then, of course, on Friday, on Friday is Good Friday, and we will have the last seven sands from the cross. We have seven wonderful preachers that will be here to take us to the foot of the cross and hear what Jesus says just before he dies for your sins and mine, goes to hell, takes the sting out of death, snatches the keys from Satan, rises up on the third day morning with all power in his hand and declares, that I am he that was dead, but behold, I'm alive forevermore. And I have the key to death, hell, and the grave. I hope that you will um, join us um, for our Good Friday service. And then Sunday morning, we'll have our sunrise service. We will have our sunrise service at 6 a.m. The, the Bible says they came very early in the morning while it was yet dark. So we'll have sunrise service. We'll have the Holy Communion. And then we'll have a wonderful breakfast together. And then we'll have our 11 o'clock service um, because it's the Lord's day as we celebrate. This is the cornerstone of our faith that Jesus lived, that he was crucified for our sins, that he died, that he was buried in a grave, and that by the power of God, that God raised him on the third day morning. And we will come singing, we serve a risen Savior is in the world today. We know that he's living whatever men may say. We'll sing because he lives, we can face tomorrow. So won't you join us? This is the most sacred time in Christendom and we want to get closer to God because the Bible says that we suffer with him. We will also reign with him. All right, let me go ahead and greet some of you who have joined me. I hope others will join us. Um, I will be here this week every day with the exception of friday friday we will be in the sanctuary listening to the seven last sayings of the cross good morning sister thelma phillips uh, miss natalie crawford how are you thank you so much for joining us for worship on sunday it was so good to see you um if i had a number i would have shot you a text um i wanted to um, just let you know that i appreciate your coming to worship with us on this past sunday sister virginia chainer and we're praying for you. Sister Virginia Chainer lost her sister in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And we are praying for her. 
she is leaving on tomorrow um, to go to um, go to Canada to celebrate the baptism of her grandchild, and then she's going to um, celebrate the life of her sister. So please note you in our prayers. We pray that God will grant you a safe journey, and we are praying for you. Sister Thelma Phillips, how are you? Good to see you. Angela Thornton, um, how are you? Um, Sister Iris Gaddis Hazel, thank you so much um, for that. Um, Sister Natalie, um, come see us again. Sister Richard Fagan, how are you? Good to see each and every one of you. Hope others will join us. Um, also, sad news, I mentioned it on Sunday. Um, one of our dear members, Sister Marva Harding Clark, she's a prayer warrior, part of our prayer team, um, lost her grandson, only seven years old. Um, her son, Anthony Clark, we're praying for him. Young man grew up in our church. Um, I, I wrote them to let them know that we are praying for them and have absolutely no words, but we trust God. We trust that he's too wise to make a mistake and too just to do anything wrong. But there are things that God does that we cannot understand. But please know that you have the love and the support and the prayers of your pastor and of this church. And together, we will get through this um, because the love of God binds us together and comforts us. May the words of Jesus be your reality. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. All right. Let's go to the word. I want to shift. We've been working out of Nehemiah, but because we're in Holy Week, I want to turn to the passion of Jesus. And so I want us to look at Luke's gospel. I want us to look at Luke's gospel. And, and Luke tells us, um, also has the account of what happens on Palm Sunday. Um, Luke also tells us um, I'm at Luke's Gospel chapter 9. Luke's, no, I'm sorry, Luke's Gospel chapter 19. Chapter 19. And um, this is the passage that we use on Sunday, even though it wasn't from this particular um, reg, um, pericope. Um, it was from Mark's Gospel. But it's the same story where Jesus says to two of his disciples, um, I'm in verse 30, he says, go to a village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a coat tied there, which no one has ever written. Untie it and bring it to me. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Say, the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. So they were untying the coat. His owners asked them, why are you untying the coat? They replied, the Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus threw their cloaks on the coat and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the end of the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in a loud voice for all of the miracles they had seen. We said this on Sunday. They declared, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And so they began to praise God. We talked about that. That's what happened on Palm Sunday. And they pulled down palm branches and they held the Lord and they claimed Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Luke tells us now in verse 39 of chapter 19, some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, teacher, rebuke your disciples. They're making too much noise, they're saying. And Jesus tells, says, I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. I want to suggest that even as we end the solemn season, we still have to give God the praise, the honor that so justly do his name. It's a privilege that God allows us to praise him. Because Jesus says in his word that if we don't praise him, he won't be without praise because the very rocks will cry out. And then Jesus continues. The Bible says, as he approached Jerusalem 
and saw the city. He's now on a hill of Mount Olives. He looks over and he sees Jerusalem. And he said, if even you had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. He says, if you knew that I've come to bring peace, um, he, he weeps because they don't understand. And he says, because you don't understand, because you cannot see, it is now hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and your children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. My friends, this is the time that we have to recognize. God gives us another chance, this next generation, the one that we're in, to recognize who Jesus is. I hope, I'm going to close here, we're going to pick up tomorrow, um, where Jesus enters, enters the temple, because we know that this season is a time to clean out some stuff. Um, this is the time to ask God, as David does in Psalm 51, Lord, creep within us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, let me just greet others of you. Sister Imogene Brown, I'm going to call you as soon as I get off of this call. You've been in my thoughts, and I'm going to give you a call. Marjorie, good to see you. Um, Richard Fagan, good to see you. Iris um, Hazel, good to see you. All of you, good to see you. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, for this time together, we give you thanks. Um, thank you, oh God, for this Lenten season that allows us to walk with our Lord and Savior to Calvary. Oh God, create within us clean hearts right now. Renew a right spirit within us. And help us, oh God, to endeavor to draw closer to you. We come to tell you that we love you, that we praise you, that we adore you, and we give you glory. Now, God, we pray for the Hard and Clock family as you have called to yourself their young child, only seven years old. Oh God, comfort them. You know the pain that is in their hearts, even right now. We pray that you will give them your peace that passes all understanding. Pray for Sister Mavis Clark, who is in hospital, sends to the church and say, pray for me, um, that you will touch and heal her body even now in the name of Jesus. We pray for other members, Sister Shirley Brand, Sister Frances Randolph, those that are born the burden and heat of the day. Help them know that their labors for you is not in vain. Then, oh God, I pray for each person under the sound of my voice that you would bless them. You know the needs and the concerns that they have. In this season, oh God, may they feel the love, the compassion, the empathy of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who loves us so much. For John tells us that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And the son loved us so much that he gave his life. He paid a price that we could not pay. We say thank you. And now, oh God, we pray that you would draw us closer and closer to thee. Hear our prayer now. Climb your ear to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you so much. I don't want to keep you longer. Let's receive the benediction. We'll pick up. We're in Luke chapter 19. We'll complete that chapter tomorrow as we continue to walk with our Lord and Savior to Calvary. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance. May he grant his peace and his love. And you're going in and then you're going out. And you're down sitting and you're uprising till we shall stand in his presence through Jesus the Christ, to whom be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen.
God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.